This is Tank's Vlog, April 22nd, 2019, wrapping up the day in sports. After a season of what I would call mostly lackluster basketball, the Boston Celtics might just be heating up at the right time. As they dusted off the Indiana Pacers and are on their way to their second round, with the power of a four-game sweep. Broom, 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 broom. Yes, that's right. The Celtics won today. 110-106. And it was a delightfully balanced effort as they had seven players. Seven of their nine players that actually got in the game. Scoring seven... Scoring ten or more points. So... Now they wait, they'll probably have a much tougher opponent as the Bucks are also poised on the verge of sweeping the Pistons. In other NBA news, the Warriors now one game away from the second round, beating the uh, Clippers 113-105. If not for that slip-up in Game 2, that blowing that 3-1 point lead, this series would be over already. Kevin Durant had a big night, 33 points leading the way. As the Warriors are on the verge of the second round. Same is true for the uh, Raptors. Who today just beat down the Magic 107.85. And the Portland Trail Blazers are also on the verge of advancing. Beating the lifeless Oklahoma City Thunder 111.98. Russell Wilson, where are you? <laughs> Rot row. Russell, 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 where are you when you play Oves come, you vanish? Russell Westbrook, can you see it's hard to get those triple doubles? Russell Wilson, Westbrook can't play in the postseason because he can't get it open. All he does is take advantage of the weak opponent and boost his stats each night now. Yeah, Russell Westbrook, another vanishing act this year as the Oklahoma City Dunder bow out silently. Hmm. NHL, autumn is coming. Autumn is coming to Toronto as today the Toronto Maple Leafs had a chance to close out their series at home and failed. His Boston Bruins 4, Maple Leafs 2. Game 7 in Boston, and usually that doesn't end well for the Maple Leafs. Last year, lost Game 7 in Boston. 2013, lost Game 7 in Boston. Here we go again. Oh, the Toronto Maple Leafs. And that will be the end of Canada in the playoffs if the... Uh, in, the Maple Leafs can't win Game 7 in Boston, so that would be 26 years now. Psh, incredible. Absolutely incredible. And to Karasin, you have to work hard. Maple Leafs just managed 24 shots in the game. This, uh... And they actually had a one nothing lead, too, in the game. And then just after that one nothing lead, it was like Toronto stopped skating. Meanwhile, it was the Sharks in Vegas facing elimination again. They were down 3 1 in the series. They won game five at home. Now, one game six in double overtime, 2 to 1. Martin Jones, who was utterly criticized, embarrassed, made fun of, impugned, had the performance of a lifetime tonight, making 58 saves. Meanwhile, Thomas Hurdle. Got open on a short-handed goal. Scored the game winner. 2-1. to one. Sharks take it. Game 7. Game 7 will be in San Jose on Tuesday night. <sighs> and the Mets. Every day. It is like, the New York on Sunday. The Mets are playing like crap. New York on Sunday, Dorton, the guard can't get anybody out. 
New York on Sunday. Travis Darno in the lineup again. New York on Sunday when every's in there, the Mets will lose and not show any effort at all. It's over. You know, I look at this team. This team is is just so mediocre, so bad. It's gonna be another. It's gonna. This team is gonna be out of the race by Memorial Day. I I, I know it. You know it. It just because they do everything half-assed. And they finally got some decent hitting, and now the pitching sucks because Noah Syndergaard, rather to be on social media, he hasn't he, he has not improved in three years. Three years, he's not improved. In fact, he's getting worse. And that man bun, you know, either cut the hair or let it flow. Well, one way or another, you look you look like a douche. You, you, you're getting out there, you're getting hammered, you can't hit home plate. And then you got these umpires always screwing the Mets, of course. <sighs> 590, all right. That's not going to cut it. And now they got the Phillies coming home. They're coming home. They're going to play the Phillies. I don't see them winning a game against the Phillies. I mean, you got Steven Matz, who was just absolutely gave a great performance last week. Didn't even retire a batter. He's going Monday. Chances are he'll probably get toasted again. Then you got Wheeler, who didn't. Who's, a, who's almost like a, you never know what you're going to get from him. And then you're going to have Vargas on Tuesday, on, on Wednesday, getting toasted probably. And then you, then if uh, DeGrom's not ready, you got Chris Flexen again. It's so fun to have two pitchers that you just know are going to lose. And if uh, Syndergaard can't improve, it'll be three. And you just can't compete that way. Yankees today built the 5 nothing lead after getting the devastating news that Aaron Judge is probably out for a long time. Those, uh, they don't heal too good. They, what did he hurt? What is uh, Judge's injury? Let's see. Da, 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 da. Uh, well, what did he hurt? I don't know he hurt something. The side muscle, I know that. Yeah, pretty significant strain. Da, da, da. Oblique. There it is. <laughs> I also love when Mike Francesa does that. So, without an oblique, uh, I think he's good. I don't think you're going to see him to the uh, also break. And if that's the case, I think you could put the Yankees in the dunk category. This is going to be a season where New York baseball is irrelevant. And that's hard to believe. The Yankees were able to come back after blowing a 5-1 lead. Scoring on the uh, base hit by Austin Romine. But coming into the West Coast, I sense, I sense despair and destitute as the uh, Yankees will go down. It was the Twins' 4-3 winners over the Orioles. The Tigers' 4-3 winners over the White Sox. Nationals got a great start from Steven Strasburg to beat the Marlins 5-0. It was the Pirates' 3-2 winners over the Pirates as Buster Posey broke out of a long homeless drought with a 3-1 shot. Red Sox might be getting on track as they went into Tampa and swept the Rays winning the finale 4-3 on a base hit by Christian Vasquez in the 11th inning. Cody Bellinger was the hero for the Dodgers in Milwaukee as he took a home run away from Christian Yelich, then came up the next inning and hit the game winner. 6-5 winners were the Dodgers in a rematch of last year's NLCS. It was the Cubs' 2-1 winners over the Diamondbacks. In the Battle of Texas, Joey Gallo hit a sacrifice fly. The first sacrifice fly of his career in 1,337 at-bats. How is that possible? But it was, and uh, that's how the Rangers beat the Astros 11-10. It was the Rockies 4-1 winners over the Phillies. The Angels 8-6 winners over... 
The Mariners ending their six-game losing streak. It was the Blue Jays 5-4 over the A's. The Padres beat the Reds 4-3. And Josh Donaldson, who finished last year with the Indians, came back to Cleveland for the first time this weekend and hit two big home runs Sunday night as the Braves beat the Indians 11-5. Today's three stars are... Martin Jones, who had 58 saves for the Sharks in that stunning double overtime win. Steven Strasburg, two hits over eight innings for the Nationals. And Kevin Durant. Today's birthday shout-out goes to Freeman McNeil, turned 60. Big star for the Jets during the 80s. And we celebrate the birth of the shot clock in 1954. The NBA was... Basketball was boring. It was a dying sport. Their fans weren't coming to games. Players were holding the ball, passing the ball. Something needed to be done. And uh, Danny Bison of the National, Syracuse Nationals, came up with the idea. Dividing it out that if you go 24 seconds, each team would have 60 possessions. So that's how he came up with the 24-second shot clock feed, the story at Barstool Sports, and at Sports Encyclopedia, where sports history lives. Good day.